Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Emad and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 42 and this episode is very special because it includes a lot of new features and at the same time most of them are quite interesting. Before starting let me remind you to subscribe to the channel because it's very important to me, important to you and it's free of a charge so I'm not sure why you are not doing it so please do it. And now let's take a look at the new features. Let's start with Gboard and the first change is the addition of a new feature called the Grammarly Check that we first saw with the Pixel 6 models only but it's now available on older Pixel models like the Pixel 5 I have here. When you go to your Gboard settings and then text correction, scroll all the way down, you will see a new toggle here called the Grammarly Check. If you have it activated and your sentence has any grammar mistake like for example what are up and a question mark as you see the word R has a blue line underneath it, tapping on it will show you the correct word you suppose to use. The second change is the Emoji Kitchen now creates stickers from your own words. So let me give you an example. This is an Arabic word that I'm typing in English letters and then I'm going to add an emoji next to it. As you see here the Emoji Kitchen created different stickers using the actual text plus some uh, graphics on top of it. This feature, I'm not sure if it's new or not, but I've, I knew about it by chance and I'm not sure exactly when it got released. Even if you typed any me meaningless word like this and then added an emoji, as you see here, I'm still getting a sticker using my actual letters. Next, Google Messages. And right off the bat, you will notice two things. First, we have a hamburger menu on the left side and your Google account profile picture on the right side. Tapping on the hamburger menu, you will see all the options we used to have under the ellipses button. So here's my Pixel 5 running the previous version and when I tap on the ellipses, as you see, I have pretty much the same options but they are organized differently. Plus, each option has its own icon to represent what it does, which wasn't the case before. The only thing missing here is the settings button. But you still can access it now on the newer version by tapping on the profile picture. From here you can change also your Google account which is something I will explain why we have it now and you can also access your messages settings. I also noticed another new option under the hamburger menu called the mark all as red which wasn't available before. Now let me go to Google messages settings to show you even more and now we have a new toggle called pinch to zoom conversation text. When you turn off the switch and then go to any conversation the pinch to zoom feature will stop. Another new feature is Google Photos integration. Now when you go to your messages settings, you will see a new menu item called Google Photos, which includes a new toggle called Always Send Videos by Link in Text between parentheses SMS and MMS. So instead of sharing the actual media itself via SMS or MMS, you can just share the link and the recipient will use this link to download the video and watch it in high quality. And that's when you will see your Google account that will be used in this process. And that's why we have the option to choose which Google account from the main page of Google Messages. So now I have the feature activated so let me show you a quick example. I will tap on the media button and then go to gallery, scroll down and choose one of the videos I have here, then tap on add. As you see here it will show you the size of the video, it will create this card to indicate that you are not sharing the actual video, you are sharing the link and then when you tap on send as you see here it says getting link what it will do it will upload the video first to your Google account and then create the link and send it to the recipient. So I will keep it for a few seconds until it finishes to show you how it looks. Now everything is done and here is the message the recipient will receive. Not only this but if you are signed in with the same Google account you have in Google messages inside Google photos and then go to the sharing tab you will see a new album created that includes all the videos you shared with this contact so you can keep track of them. The only downside is if you try to share a video directly from Google Photos using Google Messages, it won't do the same thing. So I'm going to start a new sharing process here. And as you see, it's now sharing the actual media itself instead of sharing the link. Now let me show you one last change I noticed in Google Messages after this update. Let's say I want to send a message to a contact from the phone app by tapping on the message button. But then I decided not to type anything and go back to my messages list. As you see here, it created a new empty conversation and it's now listed at the top, even though I didn't send anything to this contact. And when I go inside, as you see, it's empty. Before this update, doing the same thing will simply ignore everything and will not create this new conversation for you. Next, Google Photos. 
And now when you open any of the screenshots you have and then wait for a few seconds, a carousel will appear at the bottom that will give you multiple shortcuts from things like Google Lens and the photo editor. So here I have Google Lens search, copy text, listen, crop, and also the markup as you see here. And when you tap on any of these shortcuts, it will take you right away to the place you want. But when you get back, as you see, the option will disappear. You can also dismiss the carousel using the X on the left side. And when you do this for a specific photo, it will not appear again, but it will keep appearing for the rest of the photos. And the more options you use, the less options you will see in the future. And when you change the photo itself, as you see here, the options are now different, depends on the content you have in the screenshot. The second change is in the search filters. So for example, I'm gonna search for my name in Google Photos, and as expected, I'm getting other people to add as filters, so I'm gonna include my wife. And if you take a look here, the first filter is called Only Them, which is a new filter I didn't see before. This filter now includes a small photo of me and my wife. Tapping on it will only show the photos that me and her are included in and ignore anybody else. The Only Them filter works with whatever number of people you have in your search, starting from only one person, and the more you add, the more the thumbnail will change to include your selections. So, for example, as you see now, I have four added to the filters, and even if I added more, I still can use it. Next, YouTube. And now when you go to Library and then History, you will see a new search bar at the top which will make it easier for you to locate any video you watched before. And as you see here, when I tap on it, a new cancel button will slide from the side and you can tap on it to dismiss your search. Similarly, when you swipe to the left side on any of the videos you have in your history, as you see, there is a new remove button. Tapping on it will remove this video from your watch history and you cannot do it in one swipe. You have to tap the button after the first swipe. And finally, when you tap on the ellipses button next to any video, you will see the options are now showing at the bottom of the screen instead of an overlay card that appears next to the video itself. And also the Watch Later page got some visual tweaks. Now we have a bigger play and shuffle buttons and the download button is located at the top left corner. Here you can also use the same gesture I showed you earlier by swiping to the left and then tap on remove if you want to delete any of the videos. Change number three is the addition of a new feature called Smart Download. If you have a YouTube premium subscription and then go to your settings and then background and downloads, there is a new toggle here called the smart downloads. When you activate this toggle, the phone will automatically download the videos for you just in case you need them if you are offline. And you can modify the settings of your downloads by choosing the quality to download only over Wi-Fi to let the app recommend the downloads. You can also check the downloading help. It will give you some instructions and so on and so forth. Next. YouTube music. And it only got a small change. When you tap and hold on the app icon on your home screen, you will see a new downloads shortcut with a shuffle icon next to it, which means tapping on it will automatically shuffle the songs downloaded on your phone directly from your home screen. Next, Google Chrome. And now when you select any text on a web page, you will see some suggested search queries in a carousel and they are related to your selection. And in this case, I'm selecting Google's Tensor and here I'm getting Google Tensor Chip Samsung, Google Tensor Chip Benchmark and so on and so forth. And when I expand the window, I still can see the suggestions and I can switch between them and they are still visible and I'm getting the results in a separate page like this. I also noticed a small visual tweak. If you take a look at the top, you will see a thin horizontal line that separates between the nav bar and the web page. But previously, we used to have a different design. So here is my Pixel 4a, and as you see, we have a shadow here between the top nav bar and the web page. And this is now a thin line that matches your device material you theming. And finally, Google Chrome got a couple of new widgets that I used to have before, but for some reason they disappeared and now they are back again. The first one is Chrome Dino, which will allow you to play the offline game right away from your home screen. And the second one is a search widget that includes some shortcuts. And here is how it looks. As you see, you can do a normal search, voice search, start a new incognito tab, and also play the Dino game. And you can resize it to make it two lines instead of one. Next, Google Play Store. 
And the first change is the addition of a new field under the About section, which will show you the minimum required Android version for this app or game to run. The second change is when you try to install any app or game, you will immediately see the icon on your home screen with a progress bar, so you can immediately see what's going on without the need to open the Play Store to check the progress. Next, Google Files app. And now when you go to the Browse page and then go to Apps, you will see three new filters at the top. Large apps, unused apps, and games. You can activate or deactivate a filter by tapping on it. You can select multiple filters if you want. You can even select all of them. And as you see here, each uh, app or game has different indicators that will give you an idea which category it falls under. So for example, PUBG, it's a MB+, which means it's a large app and also it's a game and unused for a while. So by this, you can narrow down your search and better manage your storage. On top of this, you can multi-select apps and games and uninstall all of them at once by tapping on the ellipsis button and you will see the uninstall option right here. Next, Google Maps on the web. Let's say you want to search for nearby places like museums, for example, you will first get the results in a vertical list. And once you click on any of them, this list will be docked at the bottom of the screen in this horizontal carousel, so you can quickly switch between the results. You can also collapse or expand the results to give yourself some space to check the map. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the 30 new changes and features I wanted to share with you. And if you spotted any new change in Google Apps, please let me know in the comments to include them in my future videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.